Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday Interview. My guest today is one of the foremost traditional rulers in Nigeria. He's a distinguished royal father and a classical example of royalty. You will be meeting my guest after this timeout. I am Azizat Olaolua and I will be right back. Welcome back. My guest today is a retired Assistant Inspector General of Police. He is also a distinguished fellow of the Nigerian Law School. He is a committed and visionary leader. I am talking about His Royal Majesty, Obarilwan Akiolu, the Oloweku, the Oba of Lagos, Oloweku Eri Jogunola. Kabiesio. It's nice to have you. Only, on the show. only, only God is Kabiesio. <laughs> Me and my Allah Eloah. You see, all those monarchs call themselves Kabiesio. Mm. It's only God Almighty Allah in His mercy. You cannot ask anything. Mm. We are all surviving at the grace and mercy of our Creator. That is the God of all kings, the Father of us all. Mm. Go ahead. Well said. Uh, all right. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to know how you are planning to celebrate your uh, accession to the throne of your forefathers. It's going to be 15 years. God is in his mercy. The king makers, the right thinking legations, and particularly the Akiulu royal family of Lagos brought me so this was on the 23rd and 24th, which was Saturday, I was installed as the 21st above Lagos. I collected my letter of appointment. You know, I always tell people, they say they present staff of office to someone. It is those who in both created Obas who are presented with staff of office. It is instrument of appointment to enable the government to give you official recognition gazette and to pay you the little stipend. Before the advent of the British people, the Portuguese were here. And that's why Lagos was a co akete Lobon Aro de Bedegbe. The little man son a Yogi Jua Moni Lelo. Yoto a Yogi and Toba get to buy you. Toba ni bow and Tomon Lechery. We don't discriminate against anybody. We are very peaceful, law abiding, and very accommodating. You see that face, Oluweko, Oluweko. Before the advent of the British people, even when the Portuguese were here, the Allah Lua, in Jugunola, Allah Sheikh Baki Jurisha. Those are the names, the previous holders of this office have been addressed. They were in charge of everything. And I say it, and I stand to be challenged by anybody. The then Allah Lua, they were firmly, firmly in control of everything. All those marina you are saying, they were poor slaves. Particularly, one of our previous fathers, about Luoli, Kosoko, the majority of them, they were, but when the British people came, they appealed to them and advised them to stop slavery, and they should not do it. There is a document dated 6th of August, 1861, Grant, which is in my possession. 
with the modern development and reality confirmed the ownership of the real sole property. The British came, they appealed, they have started, they could not try it with Oluole, because Oluole was a very, very ruthless leader. And some of his orikis, Oluole Ajangele, Bo Lugmeru and Silo Fisi. Obani Wolf Albany, Luale Toro Ashola or Baba, and you see Toro Eboro. Who had one son, Lani Agumpo. But many people believe that he doesn't have any. It is Lawani who had no issue. Up till around 1920, Lawani was the head of all the princes and they held regular meeting at Iga or Beni Tafa. Later known as Iga or Nilegbale. Many people did not know the difference. It was one, one of the holders of the office there, Jose, he goes to the slave market, he will buy everything, <clears throat> including the blind, the lame. That's why they say, To Bara, Besile, but Jose Badi, our bag of Buepo. That is where the word of Nilebale came out. Mm. So it's not, and even I've told the government, that's not the title for that place. Okay. It's Ogbeni Itafa. And uh, before Kutere Agonari and uh, Shoku Agonari became the holder of the office, there had been three or four previous chiefs. I tell them. The editors of that place is from Edumagbo through our highly revered Mama Olubani, Relu Kuti. Rubani was the father of Ereyukuti, and that's why one of the natives on the say, Ereyukba yoba lao, omo ulubani ni duma bo, obi chokun iba agono, onlo obi kute ri ashalo, obu enyibo. You really have you see, a lovely voice. That's why I've been trying now to bring in the wool be your bass in future to let them know everything about this house. And I make it abundantly clear every time to my children. This palace is an undivided share. It belongs to the dead, we that are living now, and those coming in the future. You are indeed a historian, not just the about no, Lagos. You see, <laughs> one has to face reality. It's the mercy of God and that's me who brought me into this house. And let me tell you, I must have to appreciate and admire and see it every time. The support given by my dear son, Bola Tinumbu, to make it possible. There are some tips I will give you out of it. Exactly 15 years ago, less one day, when that letter of approval was compared to me when I was addressing the chiefs. I said, Taju, but I must say, a little old people. Omo Gunlo, the boy, Mary Obeji, Omo Ibeji, Oyashu, Omo Felele, Oliba, Owebe, Oshebe, Dunulo Mabaku. 1960, that Taju is late now. He died as the elite old of Lagos. He did about 15 or 16 years before he died. Just imagine, 1963, I was under 20. He, he was my friend, he was in elementary school. He said, really, to go back, get along. Mafia, job, alikoi. And that's why I use that language. And you know, every time I always tell people, I have to be grateful to God Almighty. I lost my mother at nine. My mother is a descendant of her. My father at 11 is a descendant of Ulugunagon, Onitano, Arumere, and the esteemed Royal House of Lagos. Out of all the equally qualified princes of Lagos, God Almighty Allah brought me into this house. I have every reason to be grateful. Mm. And you see, I always tell people, 
I'm a Muslim to the core. I know the Quran from Ali Lam to the end and the meaning. But me, I don't deceive myself. The prediction of Ifa, I still believe in it. Even in the Quran, it said, Sindikuli filigari, or Sindikuli Lam Yelidi. That you look to do yen, and not Mama Owa no hold. But all along, Ujaka on Yagba. Only a guan, or be only a lantern, a rogue, only cobwebs in it. And to repair for only. Even the Yorubas, they use part of it to do Ugma or for you. Only you do what you can pump, you can pump me. A long question, no boy. Uh, so we want to know how growing up was like for you. You told us earlier that you lost your parents' uh, nine, age. Nine and eleven. But by the grace of God Almighty, all your fair long and glory. No way, me be. At the time my mother died, I was living with one of my cousins. He's now ninety-three years old. We call him Baba Badon. They call him Baba Badon too, because my father was Baba Badon. It was my father who took. That Rashid and Masha Ibadan, 1932, with my elder brother, Alaji Mustafa, and to lose my chief in Mami Namu. That Baba Badon is there. He was the one taking care of me. When my dad, mother died, he brought me to Lagos in uh, one uh, Koko Lori Moto. Before we arrived, they have done the barrier. And I went back. I was Sabo, at Sabo Memorial School, Ibadan. I was telling somebody one story. When the queen came, that, that's why it was she, Richard Akinjede. I was with him about two weeks ago. I went to see him in the south in Ibadan. I could still recollect the song we are singing on that day at um, Marando Peria Cinema area. When the queen came in, and people said they gave us one flag and said, Cabo, Cabo, Elizabeth, Yobawa, Cabo, Uboju, Kirele, Mori, Moto, Kon, Elizabeth, Yobawa, Cabo. I still remember. What is your favorite uh, meal? What's your favorite food? My favorite meal? Me, I have no favorite meal. <laughs> I only eat moderately, but I ensure that I rest a lot. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, by October 29, I'm going to be 75. Mm -hmm. How uh, has your experience been uh, ruling uh, Lagos since 15 years? Well, with the support of the well-meaning people, and blessing from God Almighty, all has been well. I don't have reservoir of knowledge. It is everybody's contribution, all, and all has been well with us. But all of us has to be involved, particularly you journalists. You ought to make constructive criticism and suggestions to the government on how to move things forward. And emphasis should not be laid too much on money, money, money. And it's unfortunate, 90% of people in this country today, everybody wants to do politics because of the attraction. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not. Like what is going on in the National Assembly now? May God Almighty Allah come to rescue. This representative, the Senate, and the executive, particularly the majority of them have the same party. They should sit down and iron out their differences so that Nigerians can move forward. What kind of music do you listen to? All music. Do you have any favorite one? Hmm? Any favorite uh, kind of music? Ah. The favorite one is uh, Baby, you just had your mind bad. Oh, you are the one who asked me. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your Oloris as well. My Oloris? Yes. Are you interested? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm married. <laughs> they are doing fine. Okay. And my, my latest Olori uh, is, is a judicial officer. I don't want to name the person. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in me, there is room. No, I'm not. You know, I'm not. What is it? They say behind every successful they will say, man, there is they will a woman. Say, that they is, will why, look. Listen, that they is will. why I ask the question, so that people they will know say, that. They will say, um, uh, <laughs> this like my wife used to accuse me. Say, are you this guy? She said, I'm not going to be here. She said, I'm not going to be here. She said, I'm I don't hide my feelings. Okay. So, in other words, uh, about you like women? Oh, yeah. you won't go. So, no, no. Don't you like me? Well, I'm a damn fast, you don't spoil my fast. Uh, 
You know, you know, my job, my cook, so low won't talk. You go so low to You don't know. Uh -huh. You have been running after me for the past one week. Uh -huh. It came here. Mm. Okay, what uh, memory do you hold so dear? As maybe since you got to this uh, throne, or even before that uh, in your lifetime? The memory, I can say the happiest moment in my life was Friday, May. 23rd, when um, a large security my for the then administrator of Lagos Atlanta local government came to my private residence, 28 Berkeley Street, a seven story building, and handed over to me the instrument of appointment confirming my selection. As the, I was very, very happy. That's God, all the things that I've been doing, that God has been making things easy for me. I should continue to do it. Making the major I I still have some more questions for right. you, Oba Alailua, but we need to go on a short break. Stay with us on the show. I've been speaking with the Oba of Lagos, His Royal Majesty, Oba Rilwan Akiolu. We will be right back. Welcome back. I've been speaking with the Oba of Lagos. Oba Rilwanu Akiolu is the Oba of Lagos, of course, like I told you. And he's talking to us about his experiences since he ascended the throne of his forefathers. Thank you for staying with us on the show, uh, Oba. All right, so as the permanent chairman of the Lagos State Council of Obas and Chiefs, mm -hmm. uh, what are your roles and how do you uh, unify all the Obas of the state? Our role is to tell the government what is on the ground, not what they want to hear. But Alhamdulillah, so far, even from the time of the military governors, like Jack Conde, particularly Bola Tinumbu, he relies mainly on what reasonable things that any city in of Lagos tells him. And God has not derailed him. The same thing with uh, Fashola. The same thing with this present Ambody. You know, there are many people who came to me here. At uh, Alailua. The president is, uh, respects me a lot. You have to, if you don't want to follow me, you give me a letter to Buari and I want to lift oil. You. Ah! <laughs> lift oil again. Even me myself. I said, mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but anything reasonable or genuine something. You know, the head of state said something. Some people want to misinterpret it. Me, I don't care. The majority of our young men in Lagos here, they don't want to walk you. One fellow, my toro, walk out in the middle of the road. Call your boy, she mark my job. Who better you come from your leg alone? That is the truth. No, and it is the politicians who are causing it. I want to be party chairman. I want to be this. Only a few of them, but the trend is changing now. How long are they changing? Oh, very Only not very Okay. When I was a commissioner of police, I had one occasion, one driver. He went to prison for six months. I sent him to go and buy petrol. When he brought the receipt, eleven thousand. I asked him three times. Then I asked him to make statement. And I'll detail somebody to go to that petrol station to get the petrol attendant to make statement. We discovered that he bought petrol 3,000. He gave the attendant 2,000 and pocketed wow. the remaining money. Mm -hmm. That is what is going on. But along Kusha and Noah, if we have fear of God, closeness to God, all will be well with us. Mm -hmm. What is your relationship like with other Obas of your land? Like who and who? He... Any. Oba, who has belief in God, who is highly disciplined like myself, and who wants the truth, will be friends. But if you don't want the truth, we are 419, and we keep away from you. I mean, you will never, by God's power, see my hand in any dirty something. There is nobody who does not like money, but you know how to go about it. Okay. What do you have to say about the, the performance of the Akimumi Ambodi led, led administration? I've been so that for long. So far, so good. And it will be well. All will be well. You know, one thing that used to baffle me the day 
God made me the Oba of Lagos, May 24. That is the day Ambo's mother will be 85. Mm. Uh, look, if you know the number of people, investment in human and material, which Bola Tenubu has done, but he has his own shortcomings, a human being, you know, as I have my own. No. Absolutely. Thank what you. about the performance of President Muhammadu Buhari as well? Some people thought that. If you, Buhari will never talk to me again. I said, why? Because in 2011, I told him, he told me he was coming by one, he came around three. I said, General, because I've known him a long time, Tulad Bawal and Ibrahim Kumasi, and uh, Omar was the chief judge of the Federal Court of Appeal. He said the road was bad and that the traffic was very heavy. Ah, I said, General, that road that was bad and that traffic, you caused it in 1984. Hmm. You are the one with others who can our metro line. Lagos people will never vote for you. He did not like it, but he knew I was saying the truth. In the night, Tony Mama called me. I said that. But 2015, when they came, it was on a Friday. There was rain for five minutes. I said, General, God wants to show his mercy on you. But when you get there, remember to carry people along. If you give Buhari another chance, Nigeria will change for better. And you know one thing I always tell people? You see, that is vice. God is wonderful. Ordinarily, if you call Oshiba Gyo to come and be a counselor, he was my law teacher. Very peaceful, easy going somebody. But look at what God has now used him for. All of them who are doing anti Buhari, particularly of Asanjo, they don't have anything to offer. They are only not greedy, they are highly immoral of their ass order. Very soon, I will still come out with some publication, including some newspaper where we publish some letters to show the level of greed of Obasanjo. You retired as uh, an assistant inspector general of police. Would you say uh, it has helped you a lot to be uh, a disciplined person? Let me tell you, 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 you see, one of the best jobs anybody can do in this world, up to today is police work. But let me be frank to you, majority of our policemen today is very, very unfortunate. We have many good, top, and educated police officers, but majority of the junior staffs, the God Almighty Allah help them. And the reason is that some of the problems were created by governments. When I was promoted and assistant superintendent of police in 1976 and 77, if we go on investigation or something, the tour allowance, everything is ready. Do not go and take anything from anybody. And one of my highly respected was was Ibrahim Kumasi. He believed so much in God, he believed so much in me. The same thing with Alaji Atta, the same thing with Alaji Gambo. The late Mr. Abai, I don't call them the that. When I tell them something, there was a time in the office, when Kumasi said, if you want to hear the truth, call Prince Akilu here. One day, the police mess. I thank God that uh, Chief Shonekon is still alive. Openly, in the officers' conference there, I told Chief Shonekon, who was acting head of state, that, uh, sir, it is unfortunate that you brought, wood, the food we brought Abiola into office was against the military. Shoja must just go. That's the other thing. But now, we didn't tell him, President, they have given you. It appears you are a leader without authority. And very soon, whether you like or not, from all what I'm seeing and all moves, this government will soon collapse. Hmm. The late Kufuri Jolubi, Sarumi is still alive. He held me by the hand. Kumasi told, Many people that he doesn't want to see me in my office. Because nobody took me seriously. They say I was joking. They kept me aside. Four or five days later, I just say, I connect, and that is the end. Then they come, hey, let us call Prince I say, I'm not going to answer anybody. If I tell you people, you see, 
I was once offered because I knew what was going on because of one of my in-law, which I didn't want to mention now. He insisted that he wants to put my name down to be governor of one of the say I refused. I said, any post there, somebody will dictate to me. And by the grace of God Almighty, I was the one who nominated Rashid Shekoni, who became governor through the help of Guaso and my cousin, Tajuddin Olariwaju. Because any post where somebody will come and dictate to me, no, I will pray to God, I will do what my conscience tells me. You go and be a governor, you go and be an IG, you be somebody, they tell mm -hmm. you something, you don't do it, they remove you. All right, thank you very much. Oba Alayeluwa, Oba Thank you. And we should keep our environment. It's very and tell tell everybody to go and get their voters registration card. It's very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Mm. We should not be greedy. No, you are a lover of tradition, uh, Oba. Can you recite your oriki for us, sir? My oriki. My oriki. Mm. How much are you going to give me? Oh, my God, you're a shalogu. Hmm. Hmm. Usha ni kebe. Remember, usha agbobi. Kuchiri agbori oni. Yeah, any kwani bo ko usha. Oh, my God, you're a shalogu. Yeah, when you got done, gone. Kuchiri fauru, kuchiri fadaru. Bade o agbori ko me. Yeah. You see this. Mm. You see this house? Mm. Mm. God is wonderful. As I told you, I'm a Muslim. I know the Quran from Alif Lam Mem Muzalik Ali Kitabu Larai Bafi Dan Ibn Tajun to the end with the meaning. And you still practice? Oh, of course. I woke up three, four every night to pray. Mm. I know I took it, but I still believe in tradition. There is a house here. A long magic over here, right? If you say this is where Lagos should go, it is all my Lord here. Thank you very much, oh, Oba Alayelua, Alay for mm -hmm. talking to us on the Sunday interview. Thank you. I've been speaking with the Oba of Lagos, Oba Rilwan Akiolu. We would like to hear from you so you can send your comments and inquiries to the Sunday interview at tvcnews.tv. Until I come your way next time, I am Azizat Olalua. Bye for now. <laughs>